And now we have with us Kemi Shokwe Agwebi, KSA. She is amazing. She's a force at the crossroads of when, when it comes to career, social impact, coaching, spirituality. She is just packed full of knowledge in this particular field. Uh, and she's been speaking with us over the past week or so on mental health. Uh, we started last week with addressing the stigma associated with mental illness. And we're going to continue with that today. It's great to have you back in the studio. Thank you, Titi. I'm glad to be here. Okay. How do you do? I'm fine. I'm fine. Great. Uh, but for those that missed it last week, can we just do a very brief recap on, on this issue of stigma uh, and why it exists, essentially? Um, yeah. Last week was really interesting. We talked about how no one needs to actually feel uh, be stigmatized mm -hmm. for speaking up about having a mental health illness. Okay. Um, we try to define stigma. You know, stigma is when somebody treats you or sees you in a negative way yeah. because of your mental health illness, yeah. right? Um, yes, and we talked about how you shouldn't try as much as possible not to unify your experience yeah. with your person. So okay. when you fail at things, it doesn't mean that you're a failure, you just experienced failure. Mm. So, um, I would really love for us to touch on the different situations people can find themselves in. So, for instance, stigma can come from many different places. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the worst one, I feel, is from family and family members. Um, and if uh, a person is dealing with something mentally and can't even speak with their family, how do they begin to even address the outside world? Interesting that you ask that question because mm -hmm. uh, in the last two and a half years, engaging people yeah. um, and being a counselor, a coach, more like that. I've had people opening, open up to me about issues that the closest people to them have no idea, right? Okay. As close as their parents, their family members. Yeah. And I'm wondering why they would trust a complete stranger with information like that because many times it's confidential, so they, we don't see each other, okay. right? And I'm hearing things that even the parents don't know. Hmm. And there are some cases where I can't even let the parents know. And I can't imagine, I see these people every day. Yeah, yeah. This person actually was exposed to this. So, for example, okay. what happens when your family member is actually the one that is the cause of your issue? Yeah. Okay. For instance, in this lady's case, her dad has been abusing her okay. till date. Hmm. And you just finished the parenting session where hmm. the uncle, hmm. and I had a girl where... The pastor molested mm. her sister first. Mm. The sister opens up to her. Mm. Somehow the pastor molests her. Okay. By the time they go to their, their yes. mom, the mom says it's impossible. They are lying. Mm. Right? These are true life stories. Mm. So you find that people are not equipped. It's not about if you're a family member or not. They are not just equipped about how to handle mm. when somebody comes to you with a mental health issue. It's okay. even di more difficult if, so if the person is like, Okay. Family to you, yeah. right? So parents struggle with believing that their children are going through addiction. Sure. I have a pastor's daughter in secondary school, wow. deep into lesbianism, wow. but the parents must not know. Wow. Because the first thing is the parents will freak out. Of course. I can't imagine. Yeah. They feel like it's their fault. Mm. It's as a result of an issue they have mm. that has transpired, a weakness on their part mm. that resulted in the child um, having that. So many times... Mm. They are also trying to protect their family members. I can't believe, I don't want them to know that I've let them down okay. and things like that. So they would rather open up to a mm. complete stranger. So I want to come from the angle of the, the, the family members of someone who approaches them with any form of mental health issue at all. Mm -hmm. If you as a parent or, or a cousin or an auntie or an uncle are approached by someone, especially a younger person, who says this is how they are feeling, what should their response now be? Now they are armed with this knowledge that these are real life stories. Mm -hmm. There is that denial, that God forbid factor. Mm -hmm. But what should the response actually be to these situations? Okay, so first of all, is to see the person first before the illness. Okay. But I'll say this, one, do not freak out, right? Okay. Do not freak out. Say, how can you, mm. after all I did, mm. I put in you and things like that. So that's by the way, do not freak out. Mm. See the person first before you see the illness. Okay. So if a child comes to you and says, I've been struggling with addiction or lesbianism, you say, 
Let's be an ear. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> but let's say, don't tag them with that thing. You're a lesbian? Oh, mm. you're having an issue okay. with this. Okay. So always learn to separate the illness and from see the, the person. Person first before the illness. So okay. don't say, oh, it's a psychotic individual. You have you've unified, you've, it. You've unified yeah. it. You've the labeled person. the person. Okay. And this is one thing that they're always, they struggle with. Okay. Why they don't want to open up many okay. times, right? Sure. So see the illness mm. or is suffering from a psychotic disorder as against is a psychotic person. Okay. So yes, they come to you, see the person first before the illness and treat it that way over time. The therapy mm. is towards the illness, right? Not towards the person. Yes. Okay. When you help them to find that empowerment on their own, mm. this is outside of you. Okay. It helps them to um, recover even okay. better. So uh, what I'm hearing you say is once you address it as an illness um, that this person is living with, mm -hmm. you begin to treat the illness, not treat the person. Awesome. Right? So if you, for instance, hear that a child has malaria, what do you do? You take the child to the doctor, you take the, the child for a test, do a diagnosis, mm -hmm. and then you treat the malaria. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing you say now is that most people do not treat it like an illness. They exactly. treat it like a personality. Yes. That's mental illness. When you have a headache, you don't cut off your head. Mm. When you have a pain, a boil in your finger, you don't cut off your finger. Mm. Right? So it's important that you're seeing it as an illness. And you said something very significant there. When you have malaria, you go for yeah. a diagnosis. Gnosis, yeah. So the next step might actually be to actually see a professional okay. and have a diagnosis. Because... Okay. What I've seen is that the young people of nowadays, right, I feel like they are not, um, I, don't, I, I don't know how to put it, but I, I, I once engaged a lady that said, I have seasonal depression. Okay. They are so smart, mm. yet not very educated. Okay. You know, when you just know things because you see them on Instagram. Yeah. So you have superficial knowledge about them yeah. and assume that you actually do know it. Sure. So I asked her, what is seasonal depression? Mm. She doesn't even know the meaning of seasonal depression. Yeah. And then you tweet things, you post online and say, yeah. I'm depressed. Almost like yeah. it's a thing, a lingual, it's, right? Yeah. So depression, mental health illness actually requires diagnosis and there are professionals that do that, that, do that yeah. right? So the next step we actually on the part of recovery or if someone opens mm. up to you about a mental health illness, mm. yes, you're not a doctor. If you're not a doctor, mm. you want to um, take them, you know, in the direction of, actually having a proper diagnosis. Okay. Yes, to identify. And then it, we treated as an illness. As an illness. For example, for so, all the... So a lot, of people, a lot of people assume that mental illnesses cannot be cured. A lot of people have that assumption. Mm. Um, and I know that we can't, we can't you know, really address that now, but in terms of percentages, just a statistic. If caught early... How, how much of a percentage of mental illnesses can be cured or resolved? Yeah, so there are different degrees, different, you, you understand, but yeah. there's nothing impossible. Yes. That's what I always tell people. Okay. I've engaged All right. several people who wrote me their last notes. Oh, I wow. literally wow. had the, the, the guy did a screenshot with oh. the tears on the paper. You are the last person I'm going to talk to today wow. because I'm about to end my life. So this person is wow. at zero Wow. What do you say to him at that point, point right? Wow. Wow. So, but yes, he didn't. He didn't. I've Thank never, you. so far, mm. all the societal victims I've engaged, well. I'm glad that none of them, and I mean, I thank God for that, yeah. none of them eventually committed suicide, right? Glory to God. So yes, I can't give a statistics, yeah. right? But there's nothing impossible.